Hey guys, welcome to Now That's Debatable. We're back again with another shorter episode for you guys. Today we're going to be talking about biblical heroes. Before we jump in, just want to shout out Relic Media for always being there to support us. And thank you for uh, keeping up with us and dealing with us over the time. Uh, we're going to jump right into the episode uh, and talk about some some biblical heroes and just a little bit of the weirdness involved, I guess. Yeah, so. some of some of the, the the heroes that there's just like strange stories. Like I don't know about you, but like like growing up, like one of my favorite stories growing up was like one of my favorite heroes was was Samson. You know, if it was cool, like you hear about the story, you know, he killed a bear, he killed a bear, killed a lion, and you know he. He, he killed a bunch of enemies using like a, a jawbone from a, a, a mule or something like that. Uh, and so, but like, you, a lot of times you, people, you know, we don't, we kind of just skip over just some of these strange things about these stories. So, like, like for instance, like like with Samson. So, remember he he uh, he was getting ready to marry this. Uh, this this uh, Gentile uh, woman, I forget which which land she was from. It wasn't Delilah. This was another one. But remember, he uh, after he killed that lion, honey, like uh, bees went and honey bees went inside the the, the carcass and um, made like a you know a, a nesting place. And so he walked past the lion again. And he saw honey. He got out and he ate the honey. And he made a riddle which was based off of a personal anecdote that only he experienced. And so he made a riddle off of that. And like, I guess uh, there was no reason in the world anybody would have gotten it. How, how did the riddle go? He like out of the strong, he said out of the, how, what was the, the, I forget the exact terminology of, of Samson's real riddle. Uh, I should have, I should have pulled it up but, uh, beforehand. Out of the eater comes something to eat, and out of the strong, something sweet. <laughs> right. And so, let's think about that. If you had never heard that story, would you have think? Say, say, say the riddle one time. Let me say it. Say it one out of the eater came something to eat, and out of the strong, something sweet. Now, if you heard that, would you think that I had killed the lion? And then several days later, honeybees went inside its carcass, built the uh, nest, and then I ate honey from it. Like, it's just strange. And then um, when um, his girlfriend, who he's about to marry, she had told, um, she, she got the, the answer to the riddle from Samson and then told the, uh, the people that he made the riddle to. And so he, as a result, he lost the bet. And what Samson does is she goes out and murders 30 people and steal their clothes to pay off this bet. You know, and this is the guy that we're supposed to see as a hero. It's, it's just bizarre. And then the, the most famous story about Samson is, you know, is with Delilah. And so he's... Delilah wants to know his weakness, and he, he he initially he lies. He says you have to tie me up in rope, and so he's he's taking a nap, and he's he wakes up and there's there's rope around him. Delilah had tied him in rope while he was sleeping. I don't know about you, but like me, if I'm sleeping and someone is attempting to tie me up in rope, I'm I'm gonna wake up. Like you're gonna have to pick me up to get the rope around. You're gonna have to roll me, you know. But somehow he he stays asleep and he wakes up, and she's like, "Oh, the the Philistines are upon you!" And he breaks the rope and then they run away. And she's like, "Oh, you lied to me." And he's like, "Oh, it has to be new rope." And so the cycle goes. So he goes back to sleep and he wakes up and he's tied with new rope, and he breaks the rope. And she's like, "Oh, you lied to me again." And so Samson doesn't seem like he's suspecting anything. Like, you have to be like an idiot at this point. And so he's like, oh, you have to braid my hair. And so then she, he goes to sleep and his hair is braided up. And then he wakes up and then his hair is braided. And she's like, oh, the Philistines are upon you. And then, you know, he still has the strength. And then she, he, 
he finally tells her he had to cut his hair. It's just like, I don't see how any intelligent person could not see what was going on. It's, it's just a strange story. And then it makes you think, like, like how, how irresponsible is God for giving these powers to, you know, a moron? You know, it's just, it's just weird. You know, uh, yeah, I, I agree. Uh, I, I think we should go over maybe two or three more examples. Uh, I'll let you pick if you have one. I was going to either do uh, David or Lot. Uh, oh, sure. Yeah. Genesis, or I was going to do. Uh, what what, what happened with Lot? What happened with Lot? Uh, okay, so if you're, you're not super familiar, or you've probably just forgotten. Uh, uh -huh. It's been a while since I, I was reading about it, too. But uh, Lot. <clears throat> If you guys don't remember, Lot was like the half brother of Abraham, mm -hmm. and he lived in a town called Sodom. Uh, and God warned the town that they were going to be destroyed. And he he said, if you can find a hundred good faithful men, then I won't I won't destroy the town. And then uh, he sends angels into the town to kind of reconnaissance what's happening and what's going on at the town because this is like a party central USA, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and so two angels were coming around and knocking on doors and uh, um, I I'll just say what they were doing. Um, so a crowd forms in front of Lot's house and they're trying to... Oh yeah, they're trying to have people. sex. Yeah, they want to rape the angels, yeah. Yeah, they want to rape the angels that are here visiting the town of Sodom. And, and what's a good Lot, way to stop angels? Lot, being, being the one good man in the town, <laughs> the one good man in all of Sodom, right, says, don't rape these poor angels. Have my virgin daughters instead. Yeah. <laughs> right. The one good person in the whole town doesn't say don't don't rape people or doesn't you know fight people off tooth and nail trying to protect these angels and or his family he says instead of having sex with these angels i'll give you my virgin daughters and so god blinds everybody and eventually turns Sodom and Gomorrah and burns them with fire and brimstone and cast it from heaven and then as they're leaving uh, Lot's wife looks back and gets turned into a pillar of salt so the story goes uh, so uh, I mean it's an odd person to put on top of the list of things that have gone well right but you know what's great crazy like, just think about these were angels right so like the, the fact that you need to send out your daughters to, to stop them from being raped from some people. Cause like, uh, you're familiar with the, the story when David does the census. Yeah. Well, and so got, got David anyway, as a future, well, another biblical hero that people look up to, uh, but, but in regard to the angel though. So when David does the census, he wasn't supposed to. And so even though it, it says that God told him to do the census, but so he, he does the census. And so because as punishment, God sends an angel and this angel is like killing thousands of uh, Hebrews at a time. So, like, I mean, these angels were warriors, you know, it, it, it's shocking that they couldn't defend themselves from a rape. And the way the, the best thing you could do to stop them is to send out your daughters, you know, yeah, someone and, who's and, able to kill thousands of people at a time. And by the way, like just to, to put a, a cherry on top of the weird cake of of Lot and that story is that after they leave and Lot's wife gets turned to salt or a pillar of salt and they, they get out of the town of Sodom and the sounds are being destroyed by brimstone and fire, his daughters get him drunk and have sex with him and each of them get pregnant by him and have his children. What a pinnacle of perfection. <laughs> Boy, do I call that a, an inspirational story. And by the way, like, I know I'm picking fun at this and we're kind of poking the, the fun at this, this whole thing. And, and both of us 
genuinely used to be Christians. But if you can look at this story as a Christian today and say, man, it's inspirational. It just shows that God, you know, saves saves at his own discretion and, and God is all just. You might need therapy. <laughs> It's not. It's not a good story. There's. It's not justice. It's not clever. It's not good. It's not a, a good deed. It's. It, it's a terrible situation that just gets worse and worse the more you think about it. <laughs> he's not. He's not a hero. He's not like the one quote unquote righteous man in the whole town. Volunteers his virgin daughters to get raped and then has sex with his virgin daughter. Well, no longer virgin daughters. And gets them both pregnant. Yep. Local <laughs> hero. Right. Sign that dude up as a epitome of righteousness. <laughs> well, because we're trying to keep these shorter, one more. Did you want to do David or Elijah? Or did you have another one that you wanted to do maybe? And then we'll wrap things up. Oh, I didn't have anybody else in mind. I mean. Let's do, well, a, it, do, do the short story of Elijah. Oh, are you talking about like so? Uh, you mean when he kills the prophets of uh, uh, Baal? No, no, no. I meant uh, sorry. I said Elijah. I meant Elisha. And the fact. Oh, that was, oh, you talking about when us. they? Oh, well, he's calling them this in bald head, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it was yeah. like after Elijah had, you know, like, um, yeah, Elijah had uh, went up uh, to heaven to in the the fiery chariot. So Elisha was bald headed, and he was being um, teased by children. Although, like some. Uh, people were they, they don't interpret this pastors to, to mean that these were adolescents or even just young adults. I I don't know. It says children, but anyway, because he's, whether the a children or an adult, the it, it's the the punishment seems to be pretty severe <laughs> considering the yeah, crime. You haven't, you haven't mentioned it yet, so go ahead yeah, and the break crime. the news. I don't know what you think a, pun a proper punishment for calling someone bald would be. Yeah. But in this case... How, 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 yeah, so you, you call me bald head. Well, and I am bald. Then who do you think should be punished? It would be punishment, right? Them so sit in a corner or hey, no juice, no no bread today. How, how about two bears? Come out and murder you and forty other people. Like, what a strange man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, it, what's, what's even more bizarre is that it's not even just like Elisha. Like, you can't even say that Elisha just had had lost his temper or something and did something that he wasn't supposed to, because like God seemed to honor it by sending the bears because he controlled the bears. Right, yeah. so yeah, it's just it it's like weird. Was on board with it. Right. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and by the way, like the, the people that we're mentioning, these are not like off characters in the Bible. These are like some of these people are considered like founders of tribes of Judah, and 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 uh, you know like classic biblical literary like look up to these people because they were found righteous in the eyes of god yeah and stories I mean, they... told and, and like on weekly basis in churches about these people and how god found them righteous how about like like jo joshua for example like he's you know he's promoted as like some sort of hero but if you look at what he was doing like he conquer a city and kill everybody right so like if there if somebody was doing that in modern day you just they'd be like you know all, this is like the stuff that isis was doing mm. right you say this is a terrible person yeah these would be like genocidal war crimes right say, like, these are like the worst of the worst things right you, you know when you go into war you, you don't attack attack unarmed civilian cities primarily full of women whose husbands are all fighting and their children that's considered an atrocious war crime you don't you don't do that. Yeah. But there are repeated instances of people like Moses and Joshua and several other Old Testament, like really well known biblical heroes doing that exact thing over and over. So, 
Yeah. Do you want to wrap us up or should we? All right. Uh, sure. Yeah. So, um, hey, uh, guys, thank you for tuning in to Now That's Debatable. Hopefully you enjoyed the new format and we'll talk to you later.